So there's a lot of talk about mortgages and interest rates and what's going on in the market. So first, we're going to start with the real estate. This is from CNBC, written by Ray Perez. Title goes, real estate inventory plummets in South Florida, but the luxury markets are hotter than ever. What does that mean? The supply of luxury homes and condos in South Florida isn't merely tight. It's worse than that. This isn't just a decline in inventory, said Jonathan Miller, CEO of Miller Samuel, an appraisal and consulting firm that tracks 14 real estate markets in the region for brokerage Douglas Element. This is a collapse. Um, that's not a hyperbole, according to the numbers. In the first quarter of the year, South Florida inventory stood at a record low of 7,900 units, according to Miller's data. That's down from an average of 27,000 units from 2017 to 19. Miller doesn't see the situation getting back to normal anytime soon either. If if even if listing inventory doubled or even tripled, supply would be considered low in mo in most markets, he said. But sales are red hot. Despite that low number of available properties, the first quarter saw more than 11.8 billion in total sales, topping the previous quarter by more than 1.9 billion. Some luxury markets achieved record highs according to Miller. The area's top five luxury real estate markets delivered over 45% of all sales volume for the region, or almost $5.4 billion, according to the data accompanied by Miller and Douglas Elements firm uh, report published earlier Wednesday. Here's a list of the top five luxury markets in South Florida by average sales price and a closer look at how headwinds like low inventory and rising mortgage rates might affect future sales. Number one market, Palm Beach. For the fourth consecutive quarter, Palm Beach secured the top spot in South Florida for the highest average luxury home sale price. The town accounted for half a, half a billion in total sale volumes, according to Miller's analysis. The average price of a luxury single-family home in the ritzy beach town topped $21 million. Luxury is defined in the Element Report as the upper 10% of sales in the market. The average per square foot was 3659 down 2.7% from the record price in the previous quarter, but the number of sales closed in quarter one totaled 15, up 67% over the fourth quarter. See, that's interesting. So quarter four of 2021 had the highest sales and the highest per square foot sale. That means they were getting the, the most bang for their buck, the most for their dollar. Now, in, in the Q1 2022, they had to reduce that price per square foot, meaning that the values did come down in, in quarter one, 2022. Even though they had more sales and the sales volume went up, that volume went up because the sales price per square foot went down, enabling the buyer to have more bang for the dollar. Palm Beach also had the biggest first quarter sale in South Florida. The beachfront home at 854 South County Road closed at $53 million, according to public records. The 10,000 square foot residence sits on two acres across the intercoastal waterway with 220 feet of water frontage, according to the listing. The price per square foot was a whopping $5,200. Listing agent Gary Poher, he retired. No, I'm just kidding. He of Douglas Elliman told CNBC the size of that estate and water fund set the property above the rest. When asked about his outlook on the market's future, cautiously optimistic with the biggest worry being a serious inventory problem. Cautiously optimistic. Huh. If you look at the history of the active listings, we are at an all-time record low. That doesn't change overnight, said Pollard. Will, Willer, Miller sees the inventory crisis having a significant impact in upcoming quarters. It will restrain sales below the potential to sustain or increase the market share building, bidding wars. Second best market. Miami Beach Barrier Islands. Miami Beach Barrier Islands was the second most expensive luxury single family home market in the report. 17 closings, an average price almost $17.9 million. The average price per square foot, $2,700, down from the record $2,800 set in the previous quarter, fourth quarter of 2021. 
Total sales volume at the price levels in the market was almost $2.9 billion, second only to the Miami mainland market, which racked up $3.9 billion in sales. Third, Coral Gables, which is located southwest of downtown Miami, was the third most expensive luxury home market with 15 closings and an average sale price of about $10 million. The record for the area, the average price per square foot, $1,600, and that's up 33% previous quarter. So looks like they're winning in Coral Gables for their pound for pound dollar. Fourth best, uh, fourth place is Fort Lauderdale Market, which delivered 57 luxury home sales at an average price of 6.9 and an average price per square foot of 1,100, according to Miller, both all time records for Fort Lauderdale. And the fifth spot goes to Boca Raton Highland Beach, was the fifth most expensive luxury home market with 60 sales at an average sale price just $5.5 million. The average price was per square foot of $670. The market achieved the fourth highest home sale in all South Florida and a record-breaking price for the town of Highland Beach when the Oceanfront Mansion, 2455 South Ocean Boulevard, started for $40 million, according to public records. The sale of the 17,600 square foot home, yes, I did say 17,600 square foot home when most of us live in a home around 1,500 square foot to 2,000, was the highest price ever for a Boca Raton Highland Beach, according to Miller. The home's listing agent, Beverly something, Knight of Ocean Estate Properties, told CNBC the mansion's move-in ready status was plus. Fully designed, furnished, write a check, move right in. Hard to find this in the market, she said. Knight also told CNBC the buyer paid an additional $5 million for the furnishings, bringing the record-breaking sale to $45 million. When asked about the rising rates and low inventory might impact real estate sales in South Florida, Knight said it all depends on the market. But she believes when unforeseen events negatively impact the market, it's homes on the water that have proven to be the most resilient. I take a great I take great stock in believing that history has shown that the ocean front is always the last to crash and the first to recover, said Knight. Great article, great data. So now we're gonna look at a little video that I have about mortgage rates and refinancing and what's going on. Let's listen and hear what they say hit by higher rates that is hurting the lenders but there is one surprising growth spot diana olick here with the numbers diana well kelly the drop in mortgage demand is not exactly unexpected given the sharp rise in mortgage rates but the numbers are still pretty stunning total mortgage application volume last week was about half of what it was a year ago, half. While home buyers are pulling back, the biggest drop is in refinance demand. It was down over 70% from a year ago, and a year ago, refinance lending was the majority of the mortgage company business. Now it's down to barely a third. So for lenders, that's really just a crushing blow to business. Last month, Guild was downgraded by both Wells Fargo and JP Morgan Chase. All of this, of course, because mortgage rates have risen so sharply, the average on the 30-year fix up about two full percentage points year to date. And the expectation is that it will continue to head higher as the Fed gets more aggressive in trying to stem inflation. Kelly. Diana Olick, is it true that demand for adjustable rate mortgages went to a 13-year high? And if so, my respected, it's one thing to bet on stocks you think could benefit from lower interest rates. It's another thing to stake everything on it. Well, you know, it's not as risky as you think. Arms can be, you know, set a fixed rate for five, seven, even 10 years. But yes, hmm. we did see arm demand literally double in the past three months. That's huge. People are looking for a lower rate. So a rate on an arm is about 4.28%, whereas you're looking at well over 5% for the 30-year fix. So again, those loans are not as risky as they used to be. And they're a good option for if you're going to stay in your home five to 10 years. That is Probably. totally fascinating. Diana, thank you very much. Great information. You see how there's, even though the luxury market is still red hot in Florida, South Florida, and it's showing that um, houses along the water are the ones that stay the longest and recover the yeah, fastest. That's right, Kelly, the but the video showcased that there's less lending going on because people are being priced out of the market. Obviously, the luxury market is going to be more resilient, top 10%. 
are not worried so much as rates increase. But here's a look at the Wall Street Journal's market, ten, U.S. 10-year Treasury note, 2.956, almost to that 3% mark. Last week, it was very volatile, around 2.8, down to 2.7, 2.8. And here we go, Monday morning, 2.956. Wondering if that even increases over 3% as the day goes on, or as we reach into Tuesday, we'll have to keep you updated on that. So it says today's national mortgage rate trends for today, Monday, May 2nd, 2022, the average rate for a 30 year fixed mortgage is 5.41%, an increase of 12% point base points over the last week, went up 12%, 12 base points over seven days. If you're in the market for a mortgage refinance, the national average 30 year fixed refinance rate is 5.42, up 16 basis points over the last week. Meanwhile, the national average 15 year Fixed refinance rate is 4.69, up 17 basis points from a week ago. Those are fixed rates. And what the article was saying was actually talking about armed rates, which adjustable arms, which are more risky. And when rates go up to make it more affordable, people might start gravitating to that. And that's what the ladies and the charts were indicating that. But when people gravitate to those adjustable rate mortgages, is when people get in trouble when the when the market goes the wrong way and they're not ready to call or refinance because they go underwater and that's when people have to give back their houses unfortunately to the bank and are foreclosed on. Anyways, don't want to learn, leave on a bad note. Miami's getting a team, a, a soccer team, and the stadium's going to be built. The vote went through. That's, that's good news. I'm David Magard. We listen to Property Value. Have a great week. Talk to you tomorrow.